Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program, and welcome back to the Ark Space Station, and welcome back to the brave crew of the Jewel Deep Space Explorer ship, which has finished its grand tour of Jewel. We have uh, returned back, so we were on a tourism mission. We had to bring a tourist and do a low-orbit flyby of every single moon of Jewel, and we accomplished that. We left Kerbin, we docked at the Ark space station here, we sent up an engine module, so this was the top module over here, we then sent up an engine module full of one nuclear engine and lots of liquid helium fuel, uh, or not liquid helium, just liquid fuel, um, and then we took off. The one engine, nuclear engines are very efficient, and really, once you're in space, you can get by with as little thrust as possible, and that's fine. Eventually, you will get there. However, it was insanely inconvenient. I mean, the burn to leave the sphere of influence of Kerbin, I think, was like a 42-minute burn. And once I started, I realized that, oh my god, we are... Um, the burn is so long, we're starting on like, the wrong side of the planet, the wrong side of the orbit, basically. So I ended up breaking it up into a handful of five to six minute burns at the periapsis. And actually, I was able to find a gravity assist from the moon as well, which uh, saved some amount of time. I mean, the delta V is perfectly fine. Doesn't matter how long the burn is, the delta V efficiency can be awesome, but you can't fast forward through that, so it's extremely, extremely tedious. And there was always the risk that the burn would be so slow that I'd sort of like, miss a window. I wouldn't have enough time to complete the burn to, you know, do an, a correct flyby somewhere. So next time I go, I think I'll actually pack four nuclear engines if I have a ship this big. Like, I've left, this is the top module. There's no reason it can't be reused. It'll have to be restocked with life support. Um, but other than that, and a new engine module sent up, of course, with, you know, new fuel. But other than that, there's no reason this can't be reused. So all I'll do is I'll, um, I'll try to construct something that's probably got four nuclear engines on that, just to make life a little less annoying. Or maybe we'll use Ion Thrust. Ion Thrust is... Um, it, those engines are pretty weak, although there's quite a few new ones available, given the mods that I've got. So maybe they've got bigger versions of the Ion Thrust. They're much more efficient than nuclear engines, but even weaker, so we might have to pack on a few more. Anyway, all that um, to say that... Um, I was able to return from Jewel to the Kerbin Sphere of Influence and orbit Kerbin. Although, because I got sort of confused about uh, the right side versus the left side when plotting my exit from Jewel, I actually went the wrong way and ended boosting myself up into slightly higher orbit, which uh, required more Delta V to return. So I actually just ran out of Delta V required to rendezvous at the station here myself. I was able to get into a perfectly reasonable orbit around Kerbin here, um, you know, below the uh, the radius of the moon's orbit and everything, but I couldn't quite get to the, the 200 kilometer circular orbit required to dock here. So I had to send up a tugboat to pull it to the station. Um, but other than that, it is perfectly fine. We collected a lot of science, uh, several thousand science. I, th I can't remember. I think it might have been up to around 4,000 maybe uh, somewhat higher, plus this, um, we still have some data to process in the Pioneer module. I've moved our scientists from our ARC space base into the uh, the Pioneer module over here. They're going to process four science a day from that, so we're going to get another chunk of it, which is very nice. And I have moved all the crew of the Deep Space Explorer into this recovery vessel over here, which also brought an extra little hookup uh, to our space station to allow us to hook up more things in the future, which will help with resupply missions, in particular with this one over here. So that is fine and dandy. So I think it's time for us to uh, to bring our tourist home. You can see here our Tourism Plus Jewel Grand Tour mission. We've completed the visit of all Jewel's moons. It's too bad I, I didn't want to risk going into low uh, Jewel orbit and get some extra science there, but I danged it to be too risky. I had, uh, you know, sort of pushed the limits of my Delta V already and had a few inefficient maneuvers. In particular, um, I can't decide if it helped or hurt the fact that I was going clockwise around Jewel as opposed to normal counterclockwise. Um, I, I'm not I'm not sure, but in any case, I didn't want to risk anything else with too many crazy things. So we didn't do a low orbit pass of Jewel because I just wanted to finish the mission. Five million bucks from completing this if we get uh, Pepe back to the surface um, unharmed, and uh, and we did get a good amount of science as is. Anyway, enough of all that. Let's go ahead and get this done. So right over here. It's not actually an undock, there's a decouple. There we go, I wanna do that. 
Lovely, and then I want to go ahead and switch. Oh, I sent up some extra power uh, to this space station over here, an extra power module here. More batteries to survive through the night, more solar panels, just to say. And actually has an, a fission reactor as well, um, just for the... Um, the times when I might need a little bit of an extra boost, although it doesn't have any radiators, so it tends to overheat pretty fast. Uh, at some point, I'll have to do a KIS mission to attach some radiators to the side of it, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. Anyway, everything is groovy here. We're going to go ahead and tell uh, that uh, we want to go to retrograde, like so. And we just burn a little bit there and bring our parry down to maybe around 30k, which is a relatively shallow reentry from orbit. But, you know, may as well take it a little bit more cautiously. That's okay. Um, nice little space going on here. It's always funny when that happens. Oh, I think this was derated to help me uh, with the docking. There we go. Much better. And yeah, we'll bring it down to about 30 or even 25 would be fine. Just eyeball it. Good enough. Plenty fine. In fact, here I think we could almost go, like, not quite straight down, um, although if we're coming over the ocean, we've got enough time to slow down probably, but uh, that's all right. So, I don't see any reason that we can't just detach this. Yeah, we won't have any power generation over here, but we shouldn't be using any power for anything. So, basically, we'll go ahead and decouple that one. I'm doing it manually because my stages are obviously all screwed up. Um, this decoupler here is already decoupled, so... Fine, just let me quick save first, and just, yeah, there, there's nothing to be done on that stage, it's already good. Oh, I did activate my parachutes. Let's change their deployment time here, that was a, a goof. I don't know why it still has this stage here, I guess because the, um, the decoupler was attached on the side, which is what I wanted, because I didn't want to leave this decoupler attached to the docking port, that would be... Entirely wrong. Anyway, surface um, surface negative velocity, which is uh, re retrograde relative to the surface, which ensures that we keep our butt facing there. And let's go there. Uh, because it requires, these uh, parachutes always require some amount of atmosphere before they detach, and we were still in space, um, they wouldn't have actually deployed. So just changing their stuff. Actually, did I change all of it? They're not linked anymore, are they? Oh, they are still linked together. Okay, good. Oh, this one's not. How bizarre. Here. By the time we hit half um, half atmosphere, it, we are definitely going to be... Well, we better go be going slow enough. Otherwise, we are Fouquet, as they say in, uh, in French. So, um, we're facing the right way. We're just going to let it time warp until we enter the atmosphere. In which case, it'll automatically stop time warping us. There we go. And then our reaction wheels take over again, and I'm going to go ahead and physics warp at this point, because this is a very simple ship. It should never shake itself apart. It should be totally fine. Looks like we... I don't know where we're going to come in. It'd be nice if we landed in the water, because it gives us more time to slow down, but we'll see how it goes. So we are slowing down from air pressure now, not enough to hit the flames quite yet. Again, our orbital speed, it's not like we're coming back from the moon, so there's that extra bit of delay. Even here, the air is so thin, this is hardly anything. We can monitor our blader status, but we should be 100% fine. I'm hoping this is not so heavy that the four that we're still going to be going too fast, or that the four parachutes will be insufficient. I don't see that as being very likely, though. Not there's not that much going on. We don't have like a bunch of scientific experiments and things. Just four people. No life support modules either. Although we should have um, enough in here to last a little while. Curious the amount we've got. That would be enough for a day. All right, which obviously we don't need. Pepe is very happy. Finally coming home. Uh, the mission time did get, like, reset on this stuff, but they've been gone for, like, seven or eight years. And we haven't run any other missions at that point other than, um, like, that one um, energy resupply mission for our space station just to make sure that it can survive on the dark side perfectly fine. But so um, I've mostly just been ignoring things. Unfortunately, a bunch of my contracts expired, which is kind of annoying because, like, that cost me a little bit of money and reputation, but... Not enough for it to actually be a problem. Speed is dropping nicely. There we go in the parachutes. Maybe deployed a little sooner than I would have liked. They probably still said risky, but they slowed pretty fast right after that. And they'll fully deploy at 1,000 meters. And hopefully, 
hopefully will bring us to a stop. I guess we do have some mono propellant, which is a bit heavy. Um, I wonder if actually, there's no wonder I could have transferred this to um, to at least my deep space command module because I think it has enough room. This is the same one here. It has enough room for 50. I bet you we could have dumped a little bit off, but not that much. Surface speed is a little higher than I would like. I would prefer to see six, but I think this is going to be okay. It might knock my modules apart, but it shouldn't actually kill us, he said, hopefully. I should have brought more parachutes. Felt a little bit safer. I mean, even a couple of drogues probably would have uh, made the difference, plus made the reentry just s that much simpler. I always need to remember, I need to overkill on my security when we are playing with tourists, because the last thing I want is to kill a civilian. Okay, no, we're fine. I should have stopped time warping before we hit, but we are completely fine. We will recover this vessel and complete the full Jewel Grand Tour. By far the most involved mission I've ever done. I don't, I can't remember if I've ever assembled a ship in orbit to go long distance before. I mean, I've done plenty of docking. I've done assembling of, um, of space stations, but to assemble a ship that's supposed to go somewhere else, I don't know. So we recovered some parts, but the funds just through the roof. Look at the XP, like Pepe level four. Soul is now level five, and we have a bunch of level fours, but I like how the tourists gain XP too. They got they got a lot of flybys. That's a lot of experience. It's a shame actually that we didn't get everyone to level five, um, but Soul has just done a little bit more. I think Soul might've been our pilot. And if we check, contract complete, five million bucks, which is good because we'd spent quite a bit of money uh, building the space, station, um, refueling it, a couple of things weren't perfectly efficient. It was a half a million bucks to send up the engine module for our Deep Space Explorer, uh, mostly because the um, we didn't have all the giant Kerbidine, like the 3.5 meter or whatever it is, engine modules, which I think would have led to a much greater, more efficient launch. Um, and I probably could have done a better job overall uh, to cheapen that launch but and save a few bucks, but there we go. So 5 million bucks, uh, 1.6 of which instantly gets converted into more science. So we didn't actually get the full 5 million added there, but we get a little bit more science out of it, which is good, and then we recovered some bits here and there, but that's good. Also, um, I said I got like a few thousand science from doing all the jewel stuff. What did I unlock with it? Well, I have unlocked all the advanced ion propulsion over here, so we're going to have some ion engine options in the future. That was like a thousand uh, science by itself. Um, I've also gone, I think the, I, got, I did unlock the specialized um, propulsion to get the aero spike. Uh, I can't remember if we got some more nuclear power, I'm not sure. Um, more advanced unmanned tech. So giving us a few extra bits and leading to more large probe parts over here, including a new Argon tank. Argon is required for your ion engines, so more Argon options seemed like a pretty good idea. Then we've got this uh, distributor station core. I think this is part of vanilla um, as opposed to the UKS stuff. It is interesting, though. It's, like, it's just a giant reaction wheel is what it is, plus command. So this is enough to like pilot something. So you can really use it, yeah, as your station core and do that, which is pretty cool. There's no artificial intelligence there, but we'll probably want to unlock that at some point. Um, Long-term habitat we've had for a while. Oh, we had to get electronics to go there, which gives us some more science experiments, which is good. Um, yeah, all together, not too bad. We still have you know plenty of stuff to unlock. Although a lot of these things, when we get down here, are actually empty. They're sort of placeholders for future things. UKS mobile launch platform, a mobile platform for building rockets off planet. How exciting is that? Orbital shipyard for building rockets in space. Includes rocket construction capabilities. That will be very, very fun to experiment with. But yeah, a lot of this stuff right at the end um, is empty. Oh, this one's not. Inductive thrusters. Oh yeah, the plasma engines and stuff. Yeah, even more crazy stuff going on there. Um, I think I might actually spend the points to unlock the 3.75 meter heat shield. And then the Coppola module is always fun too, but uh, there's a good chance we might actually want a big fat heat shield at some point. So before I spend the points accidentally somewhere else, we'll do that. What is the next mission going to be? I have no idea. Certainly we can look at some of the contract options. Um, we still have uh, we still have some missions to go and like plant a flag again. We've, we've lost some of these things. Extract ore from Minmus, deliver it to Kerbin. That would be fun to start that sort of... Uh, that sort of um, mining procedure would be good. Build a surface outpost on Moon. And also there's one for Duna, is there not? Surface outpost on Duna. 
These deadlines, actually, like, <laughs> I was always like, oh, nine years, that's unlimited amount of time. But I basically just spent that long doing this, um, this jewel trip. But it would be fun to build these bases. Mm -hmm. Especially, there's still a lot of science and work to be done on, um, on some of these places. I would like very much to go back to the moon. Plant another flag. Completing this is always fun and extra money. Surface outpost, again, more money. But um, we could land it in just some of the biome we haven't been. Set up a permanent base there. Using a lot of the UKS stuff as a better, more self-contained base than you know the sort of piecemeal stuff we assembled before. It's definitely possible. Um, and then, you know... Going back to Duna would be fun, right? Surface outpost on Duna. If we can build a surface outpost on the moon, we can certainly build one on Duna. Um, I, th I think these are going to be more challenging than building the ones um, in space, especially in orbit around Kerbin. Because, I mean, in space, it's not too bad. Just ship something to orbit, you know, around some planet, somebody. But here, you got to figure out how to land these things, get them close enough together, and then get them connected as well, which is uh, pretty sketchy. And we haven't really done any of these orbital scans yet either. I will scan the moon for resources. Actually, this would be... I'm going to accept this. We'll probably want to send a probe to the moon, do a scan for resources, and see if we can land a base somewhere where there's um, not only a new biome for science, but new... Um, and some resources for a self-sustaining base, which we could certainly do. Complete the Supreme Moon 4 Rally. Need you to do a flyby of the moon, veil, and tylo, and finish in suborbit of Kerbin using a single vessel. Honestly, wow, we could this we would have completed this last time because I did a flyby of the moon to complete to to do a gravity assist when leaving Kerbin and Val and Tylo are both moons of Jewel, so we could easily do this. Uh, we would have done it automatic last time. Science data from space around Tylo, science data from the surface of Val. Well, we can't combine that with everything else, but I could send a little probe to do the Supreme Moon for Valley or a Rally. Um, it does have to return, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but probes are light. A little ion engine, it could easily do it. Wouldn't need much in the way of babysitting. And then it can also collect some space data around here. I might go ahead and, and build one of these. You know what, let's take that. And yes, landing on something like Vale would be awesome. Um, I guess our, our little probe could bring a lander for Vale. It would add a lot of weight. Right? It would add complexity to the mission, and it would more than double the weight of the probe, significantly in, in, um, impacting the DV. I might just, I might not combine this with this mission. I might just focus on doing the flybys, and then I don't have to worry about it. I mean, but if we're going there, if we're going there, it sort of makes sense to drop a probe on Val. What is Herbal, Val, Vale? Yeah, I guess Val maybe. I don't think this one has an atmosphere. Is this one of the big ones or small ones? Second of the five natural satellites. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uneven terrain. Yeah, no, no atmosphere. What's the gravity? Surface gravity is 2.31 meters per second. So that's that's comparable to moon, isn't it? That's like landing on moon. Surface gravity. No, moon is even lower. So, Veil is a little heavier, a little denser than moon. Now, we'd be landing something very light on it. Huh. Duration, 40 years. Well, I guess I can safely take it. And, um, this, I'm not going to bother doing these tests. Cancel it, give me something else. All right. I will see about designing something to do that, um, that flyby get it launched, get it going, and then in the meantime, while it's taking, you know, years and years and years to get to Jewel, we will concentrate on how to build a base on the moon. Building the base on the moon will be the initial test, I suppose. Um, once we've proven we can do that, we can send basically the exact same configuration to Duna. Just slap on some, uh, some parachutes to com combine it. I don't think heat is a problem entering into Duna. I don't think you really need a heat shield. I might be wrong about that. I guess so, for air braking, like, from that speed, no matter what the air density is. I don't know. We can combine retro braking with parachutes. We'll have to figure something out. But um, certainly figuring out how the MKS works on the moon would be an excellent first lesson. And there's certainly more science to be gotten there. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.